Hi, I'm going to show you how to create a Google News web scraper in any language and be able to translate that into your language that is preferred and apply some sentiment analysis to it. So you can see from the document here, I have an Excel file. I've been able to scrape some Japanese and the keyword that I focused on was Pokemon. So I was able to extract the Japanese and get some additional fields plus translate it and create a sentiment. And I'll show you how to do this with some Python code. So let's jump in. So the first thing you're going to do is install Pi Google News, which is going to allow you to install that directly into your collab notebook using the exclamation mark with the pip command also. Then I am going to get the Google News from Pi Google News and import pandas so we can do some data manipulation. Then I'm going to create the Google News API. And all I'm going to do is save a variable called GN and use a Google News function. And you can see I'm passing in a language and a country. So for this example, I'm just using English and UK as a country. And I then created a search term here by using that same variable and then doing the GN search by just using the function search with my Google News variable and I'm searching for games. Then I created a very simple loop that allows you to loop through all the entries because let me just show you what you will have. So if I just use a Google News search and then I use games and you what I'm going to get is this structure and from you can take a look at this and we can see that we have all the elements that we're looking for but what we want to isolate is the actual entry from this you could always look at the the keys because you can see that let me go all the way back up to the top. You can see that this is a dictionary and here are entries here. So we have a lot of things that we can pull out. In this particular section, I'm bringing out entries. So I'm just going to eliminate that cell. And then you can see I've isolated entries and then just made a loop to go through and look at all the different news that is related around the keyword games. You can use any keyword you like, uh, and then you'll be able to bring out the title. And in this, you can see there's also a dictionary. We have title, we have title detail, uh, there's uh, the language. So there's quite a lot you can pull through that and you can definitely isolate that uh, the same way we did here. And I'll show you a little bit of an example there. To show you the power of this is to not necessarily use English and which is my native language and so I'm going to use Japanese as we did in the, the example I showed you in the beginning and JP and then I'm going to use the country Japan and let me just run this and show you what happens when I use a English word games you will still get a result so essentially you're getting the English word games with in Japanese text. So maybe a great thing that you could do is we could pop over to Google and look for how the word game would be created in Japanese. So what I've done is I've searched for the word game in Japanese and you can see it's called Gameu. So I can copy this Japanese and this is actually katakana in Japanese. And I can take that word and paste it here. And now if I run my search, so I'll run these two cells. What I'm actually getting is the Japanese here. And we can see that word highlighted here.
So we can continue on. Now we've looped through our entries and now let's start getting a little bit more details. I want to loop through the actual titles now. I've saved my entries as the, an article variable. And then I'm looping through each one of these entries and isolating the title. And we can see title being isolated here. I've just printed it out. And you can see all the entries and titles here. Now let's create a function that we can apply so we can add any word we want. What we've done is we've initialize a function and we're using the word search. I'm using the Google News function, language Japanese, country Japan. Then I'm using that search to just looking for any term that I apply in this search. I'm saving it as articles to get those entries that we saw. And then I'm looping through all those articles to just pull out the title. And then I found this word is just casino in Japanese. So I put that there and we've run the function that we created here just by entering casino and it's printed out those titles. So let's keep going and making this a little bit more interesting. Next, let's create a dictionary so that we can get the, let me change this, the date of publish link and title because we saw that that entry had a lot of information in there and I've made this function a little bit more robust. So I thought it was a little better to put keyword here because it was a little bit easier to see. I've created an empty list called news. I've used that Google news function to isolate language, Japan and country, Japan. I've searched the keyword that I'm looking for, isolated the entries, looped through each one of those articles. And then I've, I've used a dictionary to bring back the title, the link and the publish date. And I've appended everything that I've found in each one of those, because you know, that comes individually to this empty news list. And then I return news. And this word is Pokemon in Japanese. And then I've just re initialized the function by using the keyword Pokemon in Japanese and brought back our data. Next, I've just created a data frame with that data that I brought back. And if we look at the head, we will get something like this. So obviously, you know, your user is not going to understand all this. So we need to translate it into the language that we desire. So we're going to use text blob for our translation. So I'm just going to get text blob. So from text blob, you get the text blog um, functions. I am going to show you how that works. For example, we create a blob um, from this and we're using that Pokemon word. You can use any word you want. And I want to translate that from Japanese to English. So this translation is going to be Pocketmon, which is pocket monster in Japanese. So it's a little bit different. So let's take a look from with game. So I'm going to run that and run that. And you can see it comes out game in Japanese. You sometime with names, the translation doesn't work that well, but it, it, if you're using the Japanese word, it's kind of okay because it works most of the time. If we use game here as our translation for our blob, but we're going to use a bigger blob because this is just one word. And of course we want to create a function. So let's create a function to bring back the sentiment and the translations. So we're going to create a function. We're going to pass in some text. 
we're going to use that text blob function to isolate that text. And then we re we're going to return a string, which I've used string here. And the blob is going to translate from um, Japanese to English as we did here. Next, you're going to use sentiment, also part of the text blob library. So we're going to use text blob to pass in that text, return sentiment, and we're going to return the sentiment polarity. And the polarity is going to just give us whether it's positive, negative, or neutral. I am going to apply these functions on a new column. So I created a new column in my data frame translation and sentiment. Those columns weren't there in the data frame before. And then I apply those two functions. And what we get is here, we'll get, we'll get a translation. So you can see if uh, the translation worked for Pokemon here. So you can see Pokemon home and these are the translations. Here's the Japanese and the new columns. We have our translation and sentiment, which is quite cool. And we have the link in the publish date, create a class using NumPy. So I've created a new column called sentiment class and where the sentiment is below zero, I want the word negative, where it's uh, greater than zero, I want positive. And then here I want neutral. We run that and then we'll get our class here. So we have positive, negative, and neutral. So we can use the value counts function to see what our distribution of positive, negative, and neutral is. I wanted to just format the dates and kind of sort by the date. And then finally, in our Google Colab, I want to export this out into an output file where I can kind of evaluate this. And that's what we have here, where we've taken that particular information and scraped Google News, turn that into a translation with the sentiment class, all with just some quick and easy code. So if you like that quick tutorial, please subscribe. Leave any questions below. I'll put a link to this collab code so you can evaluate it. Please try any of the, the techniques that you saw here and share them. It'll be quite interesting to see what you guys get up to. Thank you.